Hi everyone, today I'll be reviewing Little Fish by Mattson Tomlin. It appeared on the most recent 2018 blacklist with 7 votes, uh, a bit close to the end of the list. Uh, the logline, let me just find a few guys here. Logline reads, a couple of fights to hold their relationship together as a memory loss virus spreads and threatens to erase the history of their love and courtship. So one thing that stuck out at me right from the beginning was uh, this was not the script that I thought it would be. It's, um, I thought it was kind of going to be a bit more post-apocalyptic. I'm preparing myself for more a post-apocalyptic type of film, uh, similar in the vein of Bird Box or A Quiet Place, where, you know, this mysterious virus is coming and it's taking away people's identities and memories and causing them to have, you know, immense distrust and paranoia. Um, but it really wasn't. What it really, at the end of the day, at its, at its center, it's, it's a film about a relationship between a couple, Emma and Jude and um, whether they're going to be able to remember and hold on to, to their love and their relationship um, in the face of this virus. So it was more uh, of a drama as opposed to, you know, this post-apocalyptic action film. And you could tell that by in the first 30 pages that it's a very kind of slow pace, it's very measured. Um, the writer's really trying to get us to care about the characters and the relationship, which is actually very important because at the end of the day, if we don't care about the couple um, and whether they forget each other, then we're not really too concerned about the stakes of the film, which is will they, uh, do they care each other enough? Do they love each other enough to remember and fight through this virus? So I felt it was pretty um, interesting in that respect. Um, question is, did it work? And I'm not really sure because I, I liked, I think, you know, we've seen films like this in the past, for instance, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, where it's about, you know, two people who love each other and they're trying to, um, sort through their memories to see if they can hold on to that. Um, I think in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotlight, Spotless Mind, that relationship was more developed and it was more nuanced and there was just, there was more to it as opposed to this. And maybe I'm being biased because I've seen it, you know, in, in a film form, I've seen it visual as opposed to just reading it from a script. But um, I felt with Emma and Jude's relationship, it was interesting, it was cute. I didn't feel there was enough conflict though in the middle i didn't feel like there was ever a doubt of whether these people will stick together or not like their fights are very very um sanitized they i never really felt like there's anything at stake and so i think the writer can play around with that a little bit more and give us a bit more conflict and give us a bit more drama so that we uh as a reader are actually concerned maybe they're not going to make it th make through it and maybe they're not going to um get it right now their personalities uh, kind of complemented each other. There wasn't that much contrast. There wasn't like Jude and Emma. They're they're very understanding. Like they're just they're nice people. And so there was never really an issue of are they going to have this fight? And they have this very stressful burden over their head. Like Jude gets infected with the virus and starts losing memory. And I feel there's room there to play with the drama and play with the conflict. We only get that at the very end. And spoiler alert: Emma gets infected with the virus as well. And then we see a bit of confrontation and a bit of like, you know, aggression between them. Um, but we never see it in a more organic form in terms of in the relationship. So I think that could have been played around with a bit more. And really, uh, you know, Little Fish is a peculiar type of script because I do think that ultimately I commend the writer for going in a different direction. And Mattson Tomlin's very experienced, like he's been on the blacklist before. He's, he's having a very nice career. So I don't really know if I'm qualified to give any any suggestions, but I'm just going to say my opinion, which is I think the more interesting version ultimately is the post-apocalyptic version. Um, it's the one where, you know, you have all this chaos and madness going around in society, uh, like a mass dementia that's, her, um, that's hovering over people's heads and they uh, need to find a way to fight through it and retain their identity and retain who they are. I think that there's something very interesting in that. Um, in the, in this case here, it was very odd because even Emma mentions it. Some days it's like the world is ending and other days it's like everything's fine and society's working and normal. And so it's kind of like a hint, hint, wink, wink. It's, it's hinting at, oh, it's going to be like this post-apocalypse, but it never happens because society somehow still manages to survive or just not enough people are infected. So I think like, I think the writer should decide or choose what, you know, what it should be, uh, because I felt the stakes weren't always that clear. For example, in Bird Box that I just watched, the stakes are clear. You see the monster, you're going to want to commit suicide. And instantly we're having, you know, millions of people dying. Here it's just kind of mentioned. It's very unclear. For instance, on 
page 88, it mentions there that suicide in the millions has occurred um, and it's associated with the virus. And yet we never really see any suicides in the script. Ben, who's their friend who was inf infected and kind of used as this prototype of, see, this is what happens when you get infected with the virus. He just disappears. They don't even show him committing suicide. So we don't really know what happens. Do you just lose who you are? What type of memory are you exactly losing? It's never really explained. Um, and in the script, when they mention those millions of suicides, Jude just kind of frowns at it. Um, and he knows he's infected unless he's forgotten he's infected, but it's just, it's an odd reaction if you saw a headline and saw millions of people have committed suicide from this thing. Like, you'd be really concerned. You, you'd be frazzled. You wouldn't just shrug at it as if it's just a regular headline. So I think, um, it would be more interesting to kind of, and it would also add more excitement. It'd add more electricity to the script because I did feel at many times it was very repetitive. Like, we have these scenes where Emma is trying to remind Jude who he is as a person and they kind of play this quiz game where how did we meet and how did we do this and how did we do that and that's interesting but it did get repetitive because it's there's only so many times you can ask the same questions or different variations of that question so I think with this recent success of A Quiet Place and Bird Box the script does have a better shot of being made if it focuses more on that I think if it's retained like this this would be a great novel like this would be a good novella or a good book where you can really just write freely about their relationship, not really worry about trying to make it extremely fast paced or exciting. And I think it'd be interesting just to focus more on the intricacies of their relationship in a book form. And it's also based on a short story, interestingly, um, that's been written by Aja Gabel. Uh, I've been trying to find the short story online and I can't really find it, but I know it was published in, in a magazine. So, I mean, it's already in a short story form and I think it can be elongated into uh, a novel and that would be probably a pretty interesting read. Uh, but right now as a, f as a film, I'm just, I'm not sure cinematically or visually, like I didn't really, I just didn't see it as a film as I was reading it. I was just seeing it as a, a well-written screenplay. It's well-crafted, it's well-structured, but as a film, I'm just not sure if there's enough in it to make it cinematically beautiful. I think if we add more excitement, if we add post-apocalyptic feel to it and give it that type of atmosphere and aura, then that would ultimately make it a good film. Um, so ultimately, in my rating, I, I'm going to give it um, a good, not great. It's it's certainly not a bad f script, and I think if you guys are interested in this, it's it, it'd be interesting to check it out and see what you guys think about it. But overall, I, just, I wasn't blown away by it, but I can't call it a bad script. It is a well-written script. You can tell it's professionally done. You can tell the writer knows what he's doing. It's been thought about. I believe the draft I'm reading is the fifth draft or the fifth version of it. So it's certainly the writer has spent time on it to craft it and make it interesting. And it did retain my interest. To the writer's credit, I did want to... I was invested enough in the characters to know how it ended. But it just didn't... Um, I just didn't feel the payoff was really was really there at the end. Um, and it has this interesting cyclic nature to it. So in the beginning, we have Emma and Jude kind of in its uh, meeting for the first time. That's what it seems like. And then, spoiler alert, in the end, it turns out that that's them meeting each other um, when they've been in fact both infected by the virus. So it's as if they've been meeting for the first time, but in reality, they've had this whole relationship before. And, and I think that's really, really an interesting concept, but it needs to be flushed out more because I think ultimately what the script is hinting at is the cyclic nature of love and how they'll find each other again, even if they get stuck with the memory, no matter what adversity they face, they'll find each other. And I think that's an interesting theme, but it needs to be explored more because I, as a reader, was was confused um, and I feel maybe if I analyze it more I'll be able to figure it out but I just think there there's an interesting story there but it wasn't explored we just get a lot of scenes of them two just talking with each other trying to cope with this and then this kind of thing is just thrown in at the end uh, to give it an interesting kick or give it an interesting feel so ultimately the, those are my thoughts on the script let me let me know what you guys think I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this review thanks for tuning in